Hello, in this section of the tutorial we're going to learn how to use the TI-84 calculator to compare interest rates. So here becomes a, the beginning of a few sections on using the calculator for financial calculations, basic financial calculations. So we've all gone to a car dealership or listened to a credit card offer and they give you the interest rate, but usually you have to read the fine print to figure out if this interest rate is um, compounded annually is it compounded daily? Is it compounded continuously? And the answer to that question is going to basically you know, yield how much money you owe them in the end. So different offers are different and sometimes the interest is compounded differently. But a lot of times what we want to do is given a few different ways in which things are calculated with the with the compounding interest we would like to figure out which one's the better deal. Um, in other words, which way do you end up paying more money if you, if you have a different offer stated different ways? And the way to do that is to basically convert each of those problems, each of those interest problems the, with the compounding interest to a simple interest rate, which a simple interest rate would be looking at a yearly, um, a yearly interest rate for the entire amount that you borrowed you know, for one year as a simple percentage. And that's basically what simple interest is. So in order to compare these things, we're going to need to type in the, uh, the interest rate and tell the calculator if it's compounded annually or daily or monthly or whatever it is and uh, have it calculate a uh, simple interest rate for us, which is what we call the effective interest rate, the effective interest rate. So first, before we do that, since we're going to be looking at percentages of interest, let's go into the mode menu and let's set our decimal point out to uh, maybe five decimal points. Because a lot of times when we start doing this, these comparisons of interest rates, the difference between them is going to be way out a few decimal places. So we want to make sure we have that done. Now, all of your financial um, packages inside of the TI calculators are going to be in the apps menu so what I did there is I hit apps and I go down here to finance number one and you've got a whole a whole bunch of things here that we're going to get into some of these a little bit later but the one that we care about is uh, these two right here the effective this, this is calculating the effective interest rate which is the yearly simple interest rate that we were just talking about so what we want to do is is uh, hit this guy and it's going to put it on the stack for us and we need to fill in some information. So the kind of problem that you might use this for is what if you had a credit card or three different credit cards and one credit card says uh, uh, what is uh, you know you guys have a you know 5.12 uh, percent annual rate but it's compounded monthly uh, and then another you know another offer might say okay you have a 5.116 rate uh, but that one's compounded daily, so you see those percentages are different, but this one's compounded daily instead of monthly. And then maybe as a final one, you might have 5.115%, uh, but compounded continuously, which you can also have interest that's compounded continuously. So um, those are three different things that you might have, and the way to compare them is to go and we want to calculate an effective interest rate so we can compare them all. So we put this on the stack, and we type in the first one, 5.120. That's a percentage. Uh, you write it, you put it in there as a percentage, and then you need to tell it how the thing is compounded. So in the first case, let's say it's 5.12% compounded monthly. So that means there's going to be 12 compounding periods. There's going to be 12 compounding periods in a year. So we just hit enter, and out spits a number, 5.24%. Um, percent. So this is what we call the effective, in, uh, the effective interest rate, which is the simple interest if you were to apply it over an entire year, um, according to the simple interest formula that you might have studied in school. So this interest rate up here is when we talk about compounding interest over 12 months. This guy is if you would convert it to a simple interest rate over a year, which we call the effective rate. So if we go back in here, we can go back into the apps menu. Let's do that this time. Let's go back in the apps menu, hit finance. We're going to have to go down to effective rate. So we're going to go up here and hit this guy. Now the second one was, to compare it, what if you had another offer that was 5.116% but this guy was compounded daily. So for this particular case, instead of a 12, we're going to put 365 here because in one year we're basically let me delete that last parentheses. In one year, we're basically compounding this guy 365 times instead of 12 times because here we were doing it once a month. Here we're doing it every single day. And when you, but notice the interest rates 
a little bit lower. So you might think, well, this one's this one's a better deal. Now, when you hit enter, uh, you actually see that this guy is going to cost you more money in the end. Because even though it looks like it's a lower interest rate, because it's compounded daily, the effective interest rate, which is this number right here, is actually higher than the effective interest rate over here. Now, it's not much higher, but on you know $5,000 you know, car or $25,000 boat or something, I mean, this could add to a lot of money. So this is a little bit of the, the games that the banks play sometimes and tell you, oh, you're getting a cheaper rate, but you got to read the fine print to see how you're being charged. Now we can go back in the apps menu and put this back on the stack and type it in, but you can also hit entry down here to bring up the last entry and we can go and just edit what we want. So instead of 5.116 for the last one, let's just change the six. We'll delete this. We'll hit insert. And we'll put a five there. So 5.115%, again, it looks like a better deal. And here, instead of 365, maybe you're your uh, sweet deal on this one is compounded continuously. Now compounded continuously really means that the banks every second are compounding the interest um, every little bit. And what that means is the interest from one second is basically going in and, and, and going into the principal to charge you yet more interest down the road. Um, so in order, you can't put infinity in your calculator. Uh, so what you just do is put a big number. So you put something like um, 10 to the 12 or something like that. So we could put 1 times 10 to the 12. That's just scientific notation for 1 times 10 to the 12. So in other words, a very large number is all we're doing. And even though the interest rate's lower, let's see what happens. So 24808. So in this case, it was a little bit, it was a little bit between the two guys. So it was a little bit um, uh, better interest than this guy but a little bit worse than this guy up here. And so notice that just by looking at these things, you can't figure it out because this looks like, this one down here looks like it's going to be the best deal. But in fact, the first one was actually the best deal because that yielded the best simple interest rate. And so that's a really great thing to use the calculator for. If you're trying to, you know, maybe you're in a car dealership, maybe you're trying to, uh, you know, in the finance desk and you're trying to figure out what's the best deal for you. If you know how to do this stuff, then you can figure it out. And believe me, the banks will not tell you what's in your best interest. Their job is to make money. Your job is to save money. Uh, so that's a great way to, to use the calculator to, to calculate the, the nominal interest, or, I'm sorry, the effective interest rate. Now you can also go backwards. What if you know what the, uh, effective interest rate is, but you want to go and find what the, you know, the compounded rate is. So you can do that too. You can go into the app menu, you can go into finance, uh, and then right above effective, you have nominal uh, rate, which is, which is the interest rate if you're going to compound the thing. And so you can go into here and you can say, okay, what's my, well, let me, let me go ahead and type like the last one in there. We got five point uh, actually, let me go ahead and just make it a little bit easier even. We'll, we'll type in the middle one. The middle one, the effective rate that we got was 5.2487. That's what we got for the uh, middle interest that we put in there. And we were comp compounding in that case by 365. All right, so we just type the, the rate that we got for the effective rate. We put in how many compounding periods there are, and it should spit out 5.11. 595. In fact, we had typed in 5.116, so it's rounding up a little bit. So you see that's exactly what we got before. So you can use the calculator to go either way. You can have a compounding rate, and you can calculate an effective rate, which is great for comparing interest rates, or you can go in the reverse, just like what we've done here. Now I'd like to show you one more thing in this section, and that's how to calculate the internal rate of return of uh, of, uh, of something and a lot of you guys who are doing business or learning how to calculate these things and study it in depth but basically the internal rate of return is used for a number of things and one of the things that they're used for is to look at this this following sort of problem let's say you have the option of borrowing money to pay for something like you take a loan out to buy it but another option is like they do for some cars where you lease it and usually the leasing things work where where instead of buying the car, you'll just lease it for so many months. And then you have the option at the end to pay just a little bit more, not the full payment, but a, a little bit more, and then you'll own it, uh, own the car. So it's really you need to do some detailed comparisons to find out what the better deal is. In other words, are you actually paying less money by borrowing the full amount 
even with interest and then paying it back or are you are you are you borrowing less money if you opt to lease it and then go ahead and pay the balloon payment at the end and that's that's what internal rate of return can help us do so let's say you are going to buy a car a really cheap and expensive car and it costs two thousand dollars and you have two options you know the bank or the the car dealer gives you two options option number one is you can just take a loan out a four-year loan at 12 percent interest simple interest and option number two is instead of doing that you could lease the car for six hundred dollars a year again over four years same same exact term as the loan but over four years you give me six hundred dollars um, for the first three years so year one is six hundred year two is six hundred year three is six hundred um, and in year four, you have to pay me your six hundred, but I'm going to get a balloon payment out of you of three hundred dollars. Now, this isn't really realistic because cars are paid monthly and everything, but I'm doing it in terms of years because it's easier to understand. So, again, option number one: take a four-year loan out, twelve percent interest, um, to pay to buy this two thousand dollar car. Option number two: lease it for four years. The first three years, I'm paying a flat six hundred bucks a month uh, per year. I mean. And on the fourth year, you give me the 600 plus 300 more because that's your balloon payment. So the way you do that is you go in your apps menu and you need to find some way to compare these things. So you go into finance, you go hit the up arrow to go back the other direction. And when you start scrolling up here, when you get up just above some of these right here, you will find right here, internal rate of return, IRR. So you hit that and it puts internal rate of return up there. Now there's a bunch of things you have to type in and we'll go through them in just a second here. But basically what you're going to do is type in a bunch of things characterizing how this lease is going to work and it's going to spit out a percentage. And you're going to compare this percentage to the other option that we have which is just to take a four year loan out at 12% and you're going to be able to see which, which effective percentage is less and that is going to be the cheaper option for you to pursue. So the first thing you need to type in is the value of the item that you're trying to buy. So it's a $2,000 car. So we put in $2,000, that's what we're trying to buy. Now the next thing is, it's better for me just to go ahead and put everything in and then explain it to you. You have to put some curly braces here and then I'm going to put negative 600 because I'm paying 600 per year for the first three years. The reason it's negative is because I'm paying someone else. It's, it's cash flow in the negative direction because I'm, I'm actually giving money out of my pocket to somebody else. Uh, the next thing we have to put is negative 900 because on the fourth, the final year, I have to pay the $600, which is my regular payment, and then I have to pay $300 balloon payment. So that's $900. And then after that, I have to supply another little list here. And in here is going to be 3 comma 1, and I'll tell you why that is here in a second. So we close the list and we close the parentheses. So we're done. We're ready to do the calculation, but before we do it, let's talk about it. You're purchasing an item that costs $2,000, right? You're doing it over four-year term. First three years, that's why the three is here, I'm paying $600 per year to somebody. On the last year, I'm paying $900 to somebody. That is why you have the three comma one here. The three tells the calculator that this is being paid for three payments. In other words, three years in a row. And the one is telling the calculator that this last one is being paid as a lump sum at the end. So when I hit enter, it's going to go calculate an effective percentage rate of 12.29, 12.29%. And the original problem asked which would be cheaper, to just take a loan out for four years at 12% interest or to do this leasing payment. And you can see that the lease here uh, is actually going to cost you more money because it's a higher effective interest rate. Um, and so it's just a good way to compare two different things because that's what they're really good at when you go and buy a car is making it look like it's cheaper because it does look like it's cheaper you know um, it, it looks like it's going to be a better deal now the the nice thing about a lease usually is that you can get out of it you don't have to buy the car at the end and that is that is some things that people like some people like having a lease for two years and just go on and get another car they never actually own anything they just continue leasing cars all the time and if that's the way you roll, then that's great. But for people who want to purchase something and own it, you really need to go and look at the differences between the two. Uh, so this is just a good lesson on using the calculator for some, for some simple calculations. We learned how to take a compounding interest rate, convert it to an effective rate uh, so that we can do some comparisons. And we learned how to 
decide if leasing or borrowing is a little bit better depending on the problem that you have. We're just scratching the surface with what the calculator can really do. It can do a whole lot of other things, but these, fu these functions are things that are easy to understand, easy to grasp, and can save you a lot of time and frustration, uh, not only on your test if you're a business major, but in real life too.